RF man here. Today I want to talk about this new Nano VNA-F that I purchased on eBay. Uh, there's actually two models of this. There's the Nano VNA and the Nano VNA-F. The F model has a little larger display, has a nice aluminum case, and comes with cables and a storage box and some fittings. It also includes some very easy to use instructions. So when I bought this, I asked myself, is it a real vector network analyzer? Will it give me accurate measurements? Well, I went ahead and designed three filters, as you see there. And after I assembled them, I tested them on the Nano VNA and I compared the design parameters to the actual measurements. And what I'm going to be looking at is S11 and S21, and I'll explain that a little later. And at the conclusion of this video, I'm also going to go back and test my 10 meter low pass filter. I have a video out there already. It's a two part video, and it explains how to design and build a low pass filter using some off the shelf uh, freeware called Elsie. And in those videos, I go into a lot of detail on how to use that software. Uh, today, I'm not gonna spend too much time with that. We're gonna go ahead and uh, focus more on the Vector Network Analyzer and, and what it's capable of doing. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate the, the capabilities of this of this instrument and we'll be again looking at s11 and s21 um, it also shows the smith chart and a number of other parameters so here's the software that comes with it um, if you connect the vna and you go ahead and start the sweep you'll see it's going to give you various plots on the screen and I'll go ahead and explain those uh, once we talk a little bit about how to design and build the filters. So I'm going to minimize this screen for now and we're going to go ahead and look at the LC software and basically go to the design screen um, first filter that I designed was a 28 megahertz low pass filter. So again, if you watch my other two videos, you'll find it's very easy to design a filter using this software. Um, the topology that I'm using is an inductor on the input, inductor on the output for my LPF. And the family I'm using in, in this particular case is Butterworth. My other videos I use Chevy Chev. And the roll-off's a little different between each of those. And then the center frequency for the low-pass filter, 28 megahertz. It's a fifth-order filter, so it has five poles or five components. And the input termination is 50 ohms. That's pretty standard for all our RF systems. So if we go ahead and click on schematic, we can see there's the standard schematic. Um, for the five poles, one, two, three, four, and five, you see 50 ohms on the input for the source impedance, 50 ohms on the output for the low impedance. You have an inductor on the input, inductor on the output. So this is the topology that I'm using. And basically, when it designs a filter, it uses the exact values, okay? So you have to replace those with standard values. So I went ahead and designed with standard values. Okay, and you can see there 180 nano henrys, 180 picofarads, 571 nano henrys, 180 picofarads, and then 180 nanoseconds. So those are all standard standard values, off the shelf values. And if I go ahead and plot this, okay, it shows the frequency plot. 
and and if I mouse over the plot and I click on it you can actually see the frequency response in the lower left corner of the screen here so filters are measured at minus 3 dB so you can see there at minus 3.05 dB uh, the frequency is about 28.5 megahertz and the design requirement was 28 so not bad remember we substituted the calculated values for the closest standard values plus you have some component tolerances to consider as well so that's what the plot looks like by the time you get to the second harmonic which would be 56 megahertz or so Let's take a look there. I'll do this carefully. Yeah, 56. We'll get about 30, minus 30 dB of attenuation. So good response from this filter. Okay, so now we have the Nano NVA set up. And I'm going to be measuring the response of the first filter that I designed. This is the 28 megahertz low pass filter. Now you can display this data on the Nano NVA screen, or you can use the software. Um, I personally like to use the software because it's just easier to use, it's more user friendly, uh, but it's displaying the same data. So let's go back and take a look at the software. And what this shows is I'm sweeping the filter from 10 megahertz to 100 megahertz, which is a span of 90 megahertz okay and I've got four charts set up the Smith chart return loss SWR and gain so let's talk about the Smith chart first this shows us something very interesting as we start our scan at 10 megahertz we see the pop the top half of the Smith chart is inductive the lower half of the Smith chart is capacitive so we see that the filter starts out, it's inductive, then it becomes capacitive, then it becomes inductive again as we sweep through the frequency, and then capacitive. Now why does it do that? Because the components that are used have both capacitance and inductance. So all inductors have parasitic capacitance and all capacitance have parasitic inductance. So you can see the properties of the filter will change as we scan over a wide range of frequencies. So that's just an interesting observation from the Smith chart. Now let's talk about S11, which is return loss. Okay, what is return loss? It's basically the ratio between the incident power, which is the power that we're transmitting to our load or antenna, and the reflected power. So we want the return loss to be as low as possible. So if we take a look at the scan, okay, and my marker, okay, we're just over 10 megahertz here, and we see the return loss is at minus 20. Remember, this is a low pass filter, so it should pass low frequencies and attenuate high frequencies, right? So here we are at a return loss of minus 20. So the lower the return loss, the better. And we can actually convert return loss to SWRs. So at minus 20, the SWRs are 1.222. And if we go to the top portion of the screen, it actually shows you, here's the SWR value and here's our return loss. Okay, there are also tables available and, and calculators on the internet, but I like to use the table. So if we kind of zoom in and we see, okay, here's our 20 dB, Here's our SWRs. It's exactly what we saw in the software, 1.222. So we want our return loss to be very low, which gives us a low SWR and less reflected power. It means that more of the power is reaching the antenna. Okay, so now we look at the return loss. So we said the lower the return loss, the higher the gain, right? So here's our gain pretty much at zero. And then as we sweep through the frequencies, we see the return loss starting to increase. So we get more reflected power 
and the gain here starting to decrease. And typically filters are measured at the minus 3 dB point, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, it's usually where it just starts to roll off. Okay, that'd be somewhat precise here. So here's at minus 3 dB, so I got it at uh, basically minus 2.98. We can see our frequency is about 25 megahertz. And our design goal was 28 megahertz. So not bad considering we're using a tolerance of about 5 to 10 percent for the components and then we had to substitute the calculated values for standard values. That's acceptable performance. Okay, now I've also designed some 50 megahertz filters and we're going to take a look at those. Right, so now I'm back and we're using the Nano NVA to scan a 50 megahertz high pass filter. So 50 megahertz high pass filter should basically attenuate all frequencies below 50 megahertz and then it should have a high gain at frequencies above 50 megahertz. So let's take a look at the plots again. Okay, there we are. There's our return loss. Okay, and again, if I move the marker down to minus 20 dB, okay, I'm going to have the same results around, you see on the top there, 1.22 SWRs. Okay, so when the return loss is low, the SWRs, are low and the gain is high. So you can see the gain here. Okay, so below 50 megahertz, it starts to attenuate those frequencies, right? Because this is a high pass filter. So let's let's take a look. Okay, we'll, we'll uh, move the marker to around a minus three dB point or as close as I can to that, to that point. Bear with me here a moment. Okay, so I got 2.9 there, minus 2.9 dB, and you can see the roll-off frequency at around 48 megahertz. So, pretty good performance. Again, you have component tolerances to consider and using standard values as opposed to calculated values. So, very good results. And again, we, we can see that frequencies that or below 50 megahertz, right? We're scanning as a reminder from 10 to 100 megahertz, so they, they're attenuated. And then once we get to around here, 48 megahertz, you can see the gain is nice and high and the return loss is low. Okay, so we got one more filter to look at. Okay, so now we have the third filter. This is a 50 megahertz band stop filter with about a 15 megahertz bandwidth. So let's go and take a look at what that looks like. Again, there's our S11 return loss. And then we're looking at the gain. Okay, so what did I say? This is a 50 megahertz band stop filter. So if I click on here and go up to the screen there, it looks like about 52 megahertz, it's pretty good. Okay, and then we can take a look at the bandwidth at the minus 3 dB points. So I'll just click on here and read it for you. It's 45 to 60, so about 15 megahertz of bandwidth. So this NVA does very well. Um, you can design a filter, you can Use the software, you can plot it on the software, and then actually measure the results. And they are very, very similar within reason. So it's a good design tool. Now what I want to do as a last demonstration is go back to the 10 megahertz low pass filter. I'm sorry, 28 megahertz low pass filter that I designed for the 10 meter band. And take a look at that and see how that performs. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is to scan the 10 meter 
low pass filter that I designed last year. I did a two part video on this and I talk a lot about how to use the LC software. So it's probably a good idea if you're interested in this topic to go back and watch part one and part two of the 28 megahertz low pass filter. That'll give you a better understanding of how to use the software and how to source the parts, etc. Uh, and then go back and watch this, this portion of the video. But this was tested on my spectrum analyzer, gave very good attenuation. So now I'd like to go ahead and scan it and see how it performs. So I'm going to sweep it over the same frequencies, 10 to 100 megahertz, and just look at the roll-off point. And remember, it's a 28 megahertz low-pass filter, so it's going to basically attenuate low frequencies and pass high frequencies. So you don't want to set the roll-off frequency to 28 megahertz, right? Because then you're going to basically start rolling off some of the, some of the signal, some of the desired signal. So I put this at around 34 megahertz, which is fine because the second harmonic would be 56 megahertz. So let's take a look and see how this performs. I'm, again, I'm just going to look at S21, which is our gain in decibels, right? And we'll look at the 3 dB point, which is right about here. I'm trying to be as careful as I, as I can here. Um, that's pretty close. So about 2.9 dB, which is here. And you can see the frequency at around 36 megahertz. Okay, my design goal was 34 megahertz. And as I mentioned, the, the second harmonic is, is gonna be 28 times two, so 56 megahertz. So, so the roll off at 36 is, is very good. And this performed very well on my spectrum analyzer. Uh, you can go back again and look at the video and, and see what the results were. So I hope you found this interesting. It's a great little tool. It's uh, very cost effective, about $125. It's free software. And I think it can really help with the design aspects of building low pass filters and, and other filters that we use in RF. So RF man, thanks for watching.